Hello, welcome to How to Be an SEN Link Governor, a video from the Diocese of Bath and Wells. My name is Claire Hudson and I'm a School Organisation and Governance Advisor. I'm also a National Leader of Governance and I chair, I'm Chair of Governors in a Special School. But I've also been a Governor in a number of mainstream schools and have served as an SEN Governor on a number of occasions. This is going to be a brief overview for an SCN Link Governor in a mainstream school. It's not going to replace training, but it should give you an idea of where to start when tackling the role. Everything covered in this video relates back to the responsibility of the Governing Board as set out in the October 2020 Governance Handbook, pages 83 to 86, which is section 6.5.11. I'm now going to talk to you about the legislation that drives SEM provision in schools. The Children and Families Act 2014 and the Equalities Act 2010 gives governance boards legal duties in relation to children with special educational needs and disabilities. So the board must ensure that they appoint an SEN link governor, which is why you're here. Uh, they need to appoint a special educational needs coordinator who is known as the SENCO. They need to report on SEND provision, uh, usually by publishing information on their website, and they need to comply with the duties detailed in the SEND Code of Practice 2015. So I'm just going to go through a number of the points that are detailed in the SEND Code of Practice. So a school must cooperate with the LA local authority in reviewing the provision that is available locally and also developing a local offer. They must use their best endeavours to make sure that a child with SEND gets the support they need. And this can mean doing everything they can to meet children and young people's SEND and also ensuring that all children have access to a broad and balanced curriculum, as well as having a clear approach to identifying and responding to SEND. Schools must ensure that children and young people with SEND engage in the activities of the school alongside pupils who do not have SEND and ensure that arrangements are in place to support pupils at school with medical conditions. Schools need to inform parents when they are making a special education provision for a child and provide an annual report for the parents on their child's progress. For secondary schools, you need to ensure that pupils from year 8 until year 13 are provided with independent careers advice, and this does include uh, special, special educational needs students. Schools have got quite clear guidance on recording and publishing information. They must obviously record accurately and keep up to date the provision that's made for pupils with SEND, as well as publish information on their website about the implementation of the board's policy for pupils with SEND, the school's SEN information report and the arrangements for admission of disabled children. They must also publish an accessibility plan which details the steps taken to prevent disabled children being treated less favourably than others and the facilities provided to assist access of disabled children. Finally, schools have a responsibility to be clear about how they use their resources to support the progress of pupils with SEND. Now, it's usual that the board delegate these responsibilities to the head to carry out, but it's still the responsibility of the board to ensure that the functions are carried out. And this is where the link governor comes in. Your role is to report back to the board on how their legal duties are being carried out. The roles and responsibilities of the SEN link governor are set out on this slide. So they simply are to understand the legislation, to uh, know about SEND in your school, to have regular meetings with the SENCO and to report back to your board. So while the legislation is obviously important and a top tip I find is to uh, either file electronically or print out the relevant bits and put in a folder to refer to in the future, the real key part of this role is understanding what SEND is represented in your school and how the school meets the needs of these pupils. So really understand the cohort. You need to find out what additional provision is made for SEM pupils. So how does the uh, school ensure that uh, all SEM pupils are able to join in with the activities that non-SEM pupils enjoy? So are there any reasonable adjustments that you have to make under equality legislation to help the pupils with SEND in your school? Obviously, you need to build a relationship with your SENCO and to really understand their situation. Are they qualified or working towards their qualification? And we'll talk about that in the next slide. And obviously, you need to make sure that the information that the school is supposed to have on their website is actually published on the website. 
So when you first take on the role, you're going to be finding out a lot about this information. But as you become more experienced, you're going to be able to ask more nuanced questions about the provision and the progress of SEM pupils during your regular meetings with the SENCO. And finally, you need to report back to your board on, the, on your findings in order to ensure that the board is confident that they're meeting their responsibilities under the relevant legislation. I'm now going to talk to you a little bit about uh, special educational needs coordinators, otherwise known as SENCOs, who are a really crucial part of delivering SEN education. So SENCOs need to be qualified teachers and they also need to have um, a, a certificate uh, in being a SENCO. So a newly appointed SENCO obviously needs to be a qualified teacher. And where they haven't previously been a SENCO for at least 12 months, whether it's in your school or another, they need to achieve a national award in special educational um, needs coordination. And that needs to be done within three years of appointment. And a national award needs to be a postgraduate course accredited by a recognised higher education provider. So your school should also have a list of key responsibilities of the SENCO, as described in the SEN Code of Practice. And part of your role as a link governor is to monitor the effectiveness of the way the responsibilities are carried out. You also need to be assured that the SENCO has sufficient time and resources to carry out their role effectively. Now, there's no clear guidelines on this. It's really going to depend on the cohort of SEN children at your school. So this is where your knowledge is going to really come into play. Your board has a responsibility to ensure that the following are available on your website. The name and contact information for your SENCO. Now, this doesn't have to be a direct dial or an email address. It could simply be through the school office. People just have to know how to get hold of your SENCO. And then there are four reports that you need to publish. An annually updated SEN information report. An accessibility plan. Obviously, that should be updated on a fairly regular basis, but doesn't have to be annually your equality objectives, and also um, an annual update on how the school complies with the public sector equality duty. As SEN Link Governor, you should reassure yourself that these are easily accessible as well as up to date and report back to your board on this. As you will no doubt be aware as a governor, we, are, we do need to do something called governor monitoring, which is nothing connected with teacher monitoring. It's just something that we have to do as governors. So my first top tip, if you're a new SEN link governor, is you may find it useful to compile or download a glossary of terms used in SEND education. Your SENCO's probably got one, but if you do end up downloading one, please just make sure you've got a UK one. So, I would recommend having a meeting fairly frequently with the SENCO. I think once every long term is probably enough, but you may feel in the early days of being the SEN Link Governor that you would want to meet a little more frequently. Obviously, these meetings could be in person or virtually, and that's obviously going to depend on um, what the situation is in the country at the time. Now, as with anything in schools, please just do be aware that you're likely to be given some information that is confidential. It's likely that the SENCO will not name specific children, though if you're in a, school, a very small school, it's likely that you may actually even know the names of those children. So it's imperative that you don't share this information with anybody else. Please do refer to the Governor's Code of Conduct. And if you're ever unclear as to whether you're permitted to share information, please just have a chat with your head and chair of governors. The reason I'm saying this is governors are entitled to a certain amount of information in, in order to do their job effectively. And alongside safeguarding, the SEN Link Governor is probably likely to come up against the most confidential information. And I think it's quite important that we just reiterate that we've got a responsibility to ensure that we keep that information confidential. So in terms of questions, I've put a few on the screen which are very basic, but I'm going to talk through a number of questions you might think about asking. But you're really going to have to think, make up questions that relate to your, your school. There's a, there's a really good list that can be downloaded from the Key for Governors, which is a paid for service. And I really recommend if your school don't actually currently pay for it, that it would be worth investing in. So. Questions about understanding your SEND cohort in your school and how your school manages them. So first of all, you want to ask, 
what is our SEND cohort? What types of SEND do, what, do our students have? How many pupils do we have on the SEND register? So how many EHCP plans do we have? So that's education and healthcare plans. And that's, uh, that's we refer to them as EHCP plans. How many have we got? How does the school manage those children on the SEND register? Do we have action plans? How do our individual teachers manage the specific cohort in each class? It'd be worth breaking it down by class or by year group just to really understand some, some years you just get a number of children with SEND and then other issues you might have none. And also the, the levels and difficulty that the children have in, in their SEND, bearing in mind that um, children who um, have a hearing difficulty or a sight difficulty um, will be, but, but don't have any form of um, educational needs may also be in, in that category. So just be really understanding and aware of your cohort. So how do teachers manage the SND children in their class? When you've understood all of that, you might like to move into things like are our SEND children making progress? Um, you might ask whether we have any issues with SEND people's behaviour or indeed their attendance. And how does their behaviour or their attendance affect their education? Um, a side question to that might be how does their behaviour affect the other children in their class? Have any SEND children been excluded in your school? It's quite important that you dig into this one if you have had any permanent exclusions, um, particularly if your children have got an EH, these children have got an EHCP plan, as the children with an EHCP plan are more likely to be excluded than other children. And it's quite important that you make sure your school isn't using a practice called off rolling, which is illegal. And again, you can you can look that up on the Internet. It's important to understand how parents of children with SEND are involved. Are there any barriers to their cooperation? How can this be overcome? And finally, it's really important that you do remember to ask some pastoral questions to your SNCO, like do they have enough time, do they have the resources and so on. As with all elements of governance, it's important that you write up the notes of your visits. So most schools will have mon a monitoring form and it's important that you fill this in and submit it to your next board meeting. Now, if you don't have a monitoring form, there are a variety of options that you can download from the internet and personalise to your school. Now, completing these forms are important because it's statutory, but it's important in a governance context as well. With all governor monitoring, the only evidence that we've done our work is in the minutes of our meetings, it's in our monitoring reports, which is what we're talking about now and it's in our ability to articulate what we know in inspections so please do prioritize filling in your monitoring forms after you've done a visit and while your head will no doubt be reporting back to your board your report will ensure your board is confident from a governance perspective that their legal responsibilities are being carried out it's the check to what your head teacher is telling you it will also assist board members to hold senior leaders to account, to ask questions about the school's SEND provision and strategy or about whatever SEND element is under discussion. And it will also hopefully ensure that SEND is always considered in budget discussions. That's something that sometimes gets forgotten. So do please make sure that in finance meetings or when the budget's being discussed that you are talking up and uh, standing up for SEND provision. If you're from a non-church school, this is the penultimate slide and you can skip on to the, the last slide. For the Church of England schools, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the link to the Church of England vision for education. We all in Church of England schools have our own vision and values. And it would be really fantastic if you could think about how your work as SEN Link Governor goes back to your own vision. But I just wanted to share with you some thinking around the Church of England vision for education as that is particularly relevant in SIAMS inspections. And I think it really helps if you can explain how the SEN children in your school are flourishing as part of that inspection. Now, the very specific uh, strand of the uh, Church of England vision, uh, which is educating for dignity and respect, actually specifically mentions special educational needs. So that's one that perhaps 
comes to the forefront. But I think there are two others that are really relevant too. The strand of educating for hope and aspiration is relevant to SEN, as everyone will want a child with SEND to grow and flourish and attain, to be hopeful for them and to have aspiration for them, and for those children to have aspiration and hope themselves. While the most important one to me is the strand of educating for community and living well together, this should make us think about how we perceive the SEND children within our community and how we can make those children part of our community rather than other. So it links back to that comment about how do we ensure that all children have a, the same curriculum and the same experiences um, that, that non-SEND children have. And we all know that children who are happy and settled learn better. So if we provide outstanding SEND provision in our schools, those children are going to be happy and they are going to be settled and they are going to be uh, they are going to learn more. And we also know that staff who are supported and who feel safe and comfortable in their environment are happier in their jobs. So if as part of our SEND provision, we are supporting those staff and providing training and enabling them to deliver really outstanding SEND provision to those students, they're going to be happier in their jobs too. And if the children and staff are safe and happy and settled, SEND provision in our schools is going to be outstanding. And that therefore is going to lead to everyone flourishing, which is a fundamental part of the Church of England vision for education. Thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video. There are a number of others on our website, which I hope you will enjoy. If you do have any questions, please do feel free to contact me at this address.